Good morning guys. Today we're going to talk about basics of rod design. So y'all stick around. Okay, let's assume that you've got a couple rods under your belt. You built mostly kits and now you're ready to take it to the next level. What we're going to do today is spec out a rod like it's for, it could be for yourself, could be for a client. This is a rod that I have had planned for myself for probably six months. Haven't had time to do it. But now I'm going to take the time to build this rod with you guys, starting with the design, picking the components, all the way through building it. So let's get started. When you're trying to figure out your components, it, the person who's going to be using the rod makes all the difference in the world. And then what they're going to be using it for. So I start asking a bunch of questions when I'm building for a client, especially if it's a new client. And it's, you know, are you using this yourself? Is it a gift for someone? How experienced are they? How experienced are you? What are you exactly are you looking for? Why would you be interested in a custom rod? Bunch of questions. You just want to get down to the bottom line of what exactly the expectation is for a custom rod. Now, like I said, I'm, I would be a difficult client for a rod builder because I have a very specific technique in mind when I'm building rods for myself. So let's get started with this one. This particular rod build is, I want to be able to throw quarter ounce to half ounce small baits, either Texas rig, or a little crankbaits, or a rattle trap, or a little swim bait, the Mickey rig, downsizing my tackle, looking to be able to catch the more pressured fish. Where I started with that information is the blank choice. What we're going to be building on is this is a Rod Geeks B473 medium heavy extra sensitive. Now, what that means is, uh, the B for Rod Geeks is their Bass Series. The 4 is their Carbon 4 Pre-Preg. So it's a higher end, uh, lighter weight, carbon fiber blank. It's medium heavy, power, um, but it's an extra sensitive tip. So it's got a very soft tip to it. it. With the extra sensitive tip, you can throw lightweight quarter ounce type baits and still have the power of the medium heavy to turn a fish and get a fish to the boat. So now that I have my blank picked out, you know, some of the questions I would ask clients, um, are we looking at a casting rod or a spinning rod? Um, that will determine your reel seat. So what kind of grips would you prefer? Cork, carbon fiber, EVA, wind grips. Do you want a full grip? Do you want split grip? What is the trigger length that you're comfortable with, which would be trigger length to from the butt of the rod to the trigger on a, on a casting seat or to the stem of a, a spinning reel seat. The other, and the last question if it's casting would be, do you want conventional wrap or spiral? And then you have to explain the benefits of a spiral wrap and then let them decide whether they want conventional or spiral. Next, let's go through the list of components that I've chosen for this rod to throw comfortably quarter ounce to half ounce lures with some style and some higher performance features. First thing, obviously, blank. Super nice Rod Geeks B473, medium heavy, extra sensitive. And this blank is about $100. Okay, so it's not a cheap blank, but it's not the most expensive. Next, as far as grips, I'm going to use the CFX Unfinished Carbon Fiber Split Grip. So this will be up next to my casting seat, which we'll get to the casting seat in a minute. It's pretty trick. And then it'll be split, obviously. And then I'll have a butt cap that'll slide over this tenon to make up the end of the grip. Now, these are gonna run me you about $25 for the set, uh, plus tax, obviously I bought these at Mudhole. I, I like this 
unfinished carbon fiber, which allows me to do some interesting finishes over top of the carbon fiber. We'll get into that later. Um, the real seat, this is a Matagai painted. Uh, it's basically a, a Fuji ACS size 16 trigger seat um, with a carbon fiber insert. Uh, we're going to have to cut, cut this carbon fiber down and get it to fit like I want it to, but we'll get into that once we start building. Um, the guides I've picked out, I've decided to use the, uh, the CRB LZR casting guide sets. Now, this is a higher-end guide set. It's about $40, um, which is the point in guides, in my opinion, where you start to get to the, the that point of diminishing returns. You can spend a lot more money on guides than $40 for the set, but do you really get that much more sensitivity in return? I don't think so. That's not to say I don't build rods with $100 you know, Torzite guide trains on them because I have clients who want that. Perfect. For me, I don't think it's necessary. So this is about as a high-end guide train that I'll put on my personal rods. But I really like them. They're, uh, they're smaller profile, smaller frame. They don't tangle as easy. Uh, and I've just started using them this year. So the CRB laser guide train. Make it a matching um, LZR tip top medium duty um, in a 5.5 tube and a 5 ring size. And then I'm going to use the ALX hook keeper in black. I will use that in the split grip. And then I'm probably going to use a black metallic thread just because I like that look and I think it'll pair nicely with this really cool reel seat. All right, guys, there's the components. The design itself is not that big a deal. Now, it took me about an hour to get everything pieced out of my inventory and figure out exactly what I wanted to do, but it's the basic questions. Once you get the answers to them, the parts start to fall in place. Um, next time, we're going to start building this work of art um, in the rod shop here. I'm going to go step-by-step step with you guys. I'm going to do it kind of quick. I think I can get this rod built in three days. Um, try to get it done for myself so I can play with it before Christmas. This is my Christmas present to myself. If you guys are getting something out of these videos, and, and obviously you are because there's a bunch of people watching them, go ahead and click that subscribe button down in the bottom for me. That'll do a couple things. One, it shows me you guys really are interested in this stuff. And two, it'll help push these videos out to other people who might get something out of them as well. So I'd appreciate your help on that. If you have any questions about the design aspects of rod building, put them down in the comments below or shoot me an email at fdxcustomrods at gmail.com. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we get started on this bad boy. Peace.